Welcome to the third module of SOAP UI training. Uh, in this training, I'll be starting with a little advanced concepts of Groovy. Right? Now, the best way actually to learn Groovy is from this particular website, uh, groovy.codeverse.com. And out here, you have got documentation in Groovy. Uh, there are a lot of things actually out here on the website about Groovy. Things which are not required in SOAP UI as well are there. It's a complete end-to-end -end Groovy tutorial website. So you can go into the documentation and you can read about it. Right? Today, uh, what I'm going to start about is I'm going to start about with the object-oriented concepts in the Groovy language. Fine. Now, if I go back to SOAP UI and if I create a new SOAP UI project and name it module 3, right? And inside module 3, I'll create a new test suite. And then a new test case. And under a test case, as I had told you earlier, you can create many kinds of test steps. And right now, we are talking about the Groovy scripting part. Okay. Later on, we'll see all these test steps and all. So I'll talk about Groovy script, and I create a new Groovy script over here. Fine. You can rename this by simply pressing F2, and you can rename it. Right. So I'll just name rename this script to intro okay now we had seen earlier that using log.info you can print anything in groovy and if you run this it gets printed in the logs now in this particular groovy script you can also make a class right you'll come to know very soon what class is how it looks like when you have basically make have to make a class like this for example class i'll uh, name my class as say planets right so this is a class called planets and inside this class i can keep a lot of variables and functions. Just accept things as they are for some time. You will come to know what am I doing. Right. So, for example, let's talk about variables. There can be two kinds of variables in this class. If I write over here, define name. So, this is one variable name. And if I write define, say, shape this is another variable shape inside the class planet so this is a class planet right or a single planet yeah that will do it's got a name and shape look the whole thing will look very similar to java language if you know java then the whole thing will look very similar to java java tutorials are also available in this course in the coming uh, modules java tutorials are there if you can watch them before movie that will really help you out okay now, uh, this class is having simply two variables inside it. Fine. Now, there is uh, something like if I, like, there is something known as creating objects of a class. Okay. Because if you have to use this class, you'll have to do something, right? We use the class by creating the objects of a class. We use class by creating objects of a class. For example, we create the object of the planet class like this. Planet P1 equals to new planet. By writing this, I create the object of this class. Fine. Basically, if you comment out this part, if you remove that, then also I'm creating a new object. 
what do you mean by new object by saying new object out here in the memory an object of the planet class will be formed inside it name and shape variables will be there but to access this object you need a reference i have to write like this planet p1 equals to new planet so what happens in the memory if i write like this is that there will be a object reference p1 pointing towards this object okay similarly i can create another object of this class say p2 and another object say p3 the concept is same as the concept of any other programming object oriented language right ruby is also object oriented so that's why i'm going over to object oriented concepts now right so now what happens is that three objects of this class are created all three will have the variables name and shape inside them right so this would be p1 p2 and p3 p1 p2 and p3 are not objects they are pointers or there are references which are actually pointing towards the objects okay now if i write on the next line p1 dot name is earth p2 dot name is jupiter and p3 dot name is mars so p1 p2 and p3 will be three planets with three different names right now if i write over here log dot info p1 dot name log dot info p2 dot name and log dot info p3 dot name so names of the three planets will be printed remember this class is separate this is just the individual entity this is the scope of the class it starts with this bracket ends with this bracket out here i am using this class i am creating the objects of this class i am initializing the objects over here right so when you run this thing now if you look it in the output you will see that earth jupiter and mars are printed which are the names of the planets p1 p2 and p3 okay so this is basically what an object is there is just one class with one set of variables name and shape but practically what i am doing here i am duplicating those variables in the memory with the help of objects every planet will have a different name and shape right now if you want to initialize the shape you can also initialize the shape you can write p1 dot shape is circle similarly p2 dot shape is circle and similarly p3 dot shape is Okay, so all the three planets will have the shape as circle. So I end up initializing P1, P2 as well as P3 out here and print the names. Fine. Now, if you have to print the shape, then you can also write P1 dot name plus some blank space plus P1 dot shape. You can write like this. P two, P three. So if you run this, this will simply print Earth circle, Jupiter circle, Mars circle. Everything will be printed like this. 
fine now out here in the memory the whole scenario is looking like this p1 p2 and p3 are three object references now the beauty is that i can make p1 i can remove p1 from this object and i can make p1 point towards the second object as well all i need to do is that i just need to write p1 equals to p2 when i write p1 equals to p2 p1 simply removes its Uh, location it simply uh, removes it from it, it removes itself from the first object and starts pointing towards the same object where p2 is pointing and now if i print this thing before that i'll just write long dot in for some star and if i run this See this prints a uh, Jupiter circle, Jupiter circle two times. Why? Because P one is now pointing towards the place where P two is pointing. That is Jupiter, right? So this name out here is Jupiter. This name out here is Earth. This name out here is Mars. So P1 and P2 both point towards Jupiter. Fine. Now this is how you can make the object references move from one object to another object. Objects they are static in memory. That is that means they are just they are at a common location. That they are at a fixed location. These locations cannot be changed. But the object references they can be changed from one position to another. Right. now if i uh, if p1 change, changes the state if i write p1 dot name is pluto p1 is pointing towards the location where p2 is pointing right p2 is saying that the name of the uh, star or the name of the planet is p2 so now p1 changes the name to it removes jupiter it changes the name to pluto so for p2 as well the updated name will come up so if i write this thing again over here for both p1 and p2 for both these lines this will be printing pluto double slash is comment that means this will be ignored right pluto and pluto this will not be executed this is just a comment for my understanding if you keep something in front of double slash so when you run this it prints pluto for both the things earlier it was printing jupiter so one object or one object can have multiple object references like this p1 and p2 are object references to this one object okay and secondly if uh, if one object reference changes the state of the object it gets changed for all the object references okay so this is what i mean to tell you right this is what the objects they mean objects are like uh, we can say a photocopy of the class of all the elements of the class right and you can create as many objects of the class as you want fine okay. now in this case out here this This class planet right has got a variable called shape. So all the planets would have the same shape. So it really doesn't make any sense to have the shape variable inside every object when we know that all the objects will be having the same shape that is circle. All the planets would be 
circular it makes no sense to keep shape inside every planet because this every planet has the shape as circle so what we do is that we remove hold on we remove this from here we remove the shape variable from the object and we keep it at a common location in the memory out here somewhere and all the objects they can access the shape from that common location we do it by simply saying um out here define static shape we make the shape static what happens by defining it static is that shape will no longer be the part of the object so you can comment these three lines and you can directly write planet dot shape is circle so what happens is that for all the three objects or for all the objects which we will create for all the objects the shape will be a circle by writing static in front of the shape variable i am making this variable common for all the objects but the name is not static so it will not be common for all the objects name will be present inside every object okay so basically there is a planet class it's got this variable this variable is known as non static variable and this variable is known as static variable non static variable will have a copy in every object right we it should have a copy in p1 p2 p3 it will have a copy in every object but the static variable fine it will be common for all the objects and you can access the static variable with the class name dot the static variable i cannot write like this planet dot name is say pluto i cannot write like this because name is a non static variable name which planet basically which do i mean to say that all the planets have the name pluto no so the name variable has to be accessed with p1 dot or the object reference dot so you cannot write it like this for non static this is illegal but for static stuff you can directly access it with the help of uh the class dot the static variable okay right please practice this thing right please open your soap ui and write the code which i am making then only you will come to understand you have to write it you have to fill the code you have to tweak it as per your understanding and only then you will understand it if you just watching this like a movie it will never be you you will never be able to understand it okay now this is the class planet fine in this class i can make a function i can make a function like public void print name and in this planet function print name this is again a oh sorry this is again a non static function right and i'll make another function called public static void what is void i'll tell you in some time what is public 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 means it can be accessed from anywhere and even outside the class right i am writing public static void print or uh, 
se revolve. In this, I'll write log dot info. planet revolving and in this I'll write log dot info and I'll just print the name okay right now this is a non static function and this is a static function all the planets have a common property that they all revolve. So I am making this function static. So stuff which is common for all the objects, you will make it static. But every object has a different name. So print name function will be non-static. So what will happen is that in the memory, in the memory, if I have an object like this. In this object, name and print name would be present. Similarly, if I have another object, in this object as well, the name variable and print name function will be present. Object is nothing but object contains all the non static things, non static variables and non static functions. Both will be present. But the static things will be lying at a common location in the memory out here somewhere okay and inside this uh, static you will have shape variable and revolve function this static variable and function would be common for every object, no matter if I create 1000 objects, all of them would be having these properties. So whatever is common to objects, you keep them static. Alright, now, if I want to print the name, I can write p1 dot print name. The static, non-static has to be called with non static has to be called with a reference p1 is the object reference right and if you run this you will see that hold on you clear this and if you run this you see that there is a compilation error right script 10 line number 53 unexpected token uh, okay I did not close this anyways if I run this now I again get an error on line number 52 apparent variable log was found in a static scope but doesn't refer a local variable Basically, the thing is, I'll tell you, it's not able to identify what log.info is. Right? In this script, script is invoked by default with log, but inside the class planet, <coughs> okay, inside the class planet, log cannot be resolved. That's why it's giving you an error, because the log is present outside this class. But inside this class, this class is something like a closed scope. Bracket opens, bracket closed in the end. And inside this class, the log variable, it cannot be recognized. So to recognize the log variable, we'll make a global variable called define static log. And out here in the very beginning, We'll write planet dot log is equal to log. Now, what am I doing over here? Suppose in this, uh, I I make a variable called uh, print stuff. 